My name is Bill Sandler. I'm the Warning Coordination Meteorologist for the National Weather Service Office in Wakefield, Virginia. And I want to spend a few minutes talking about how severe thunderstorm, tornado, and flash flood warnings are disseminated and how you might receive them and the differences between those various dissemination methods. For about the last decade, National Weather Service short fused warnings, that being tornadoes, severe thunderstorm, and flash flood, have been storm-based or polygon-oriented. In many cases, these warnings include parts of cities or counties and not necessarily the entire city or the entire county. And you can see that by looking at the polygon on the right, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Some dissemination systems that are out there, for example, NOAA Weather Radio and the Emergency Alert System, however, use a county-based or a city-based geographic orientation, and they're really not compatible with some of the newer technologies that utilize our polygons. Prior to the early 2000s, NOAA Weather Radio, local media, and the emergency alert system were the primary means by which people received short-fused warnings. EAS and NOAA Weather Radio, as we talked about a minute ago, warned by city or county and are not designed to utilize the polygon aspect of our warnings that we've had for the last decade. In addition, some weather apps utilize zip code boundaries, which, if you look at the map on the right, occasionally cross city or county boundaries. For the last 15 years, we've seen an emergence of new technologies that provide warning services to individuals, homes, businesses, and in some cases, first responders, in ways not previously available. Many of these services, including INWS, mobile apps on your smartphone or tablet, or locality-operated systems such as Code Red and Everbridge, have the ability to utilize National Weather Service warning polygons to distribute tornado, severe thunderstorm, and flash flood warnings in a timely fashion. In addition, a relatively new service called Wireless Emergency Alerts, or WEA, has the capability to warn you where you are. And we'll spend a minute talking about WEA now. WEA is a joint venture between the wireless carriers, the National Weather Service, and the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. WEA warns you where you are at the time the warning is issued. This has a huge advantage in our mobile society where vacations, business trips, etc. often place us in geographically unfamiliar territory. Wireless emergency alerts attempt to restrict the warning area to the area included within the polygon. However, the circular shape of cell phone tower coverage areas means that some phones outside the warning polygon will receive the warning. Thus, an overwarning occurs as a result. In general, though, the overall benefit of receiving a tornado or flash flood warning, which could be clearly life-threatening, outweighs the overwarning that you might get because of the warning polygon cell phone tower orientation differences. Now let's apply the differences in various warning systems to the tornado warning issued for areas in and around the Richmond metro area during the morning hours of May 5th. The disparity between warning systems and their ability to warn based upon the polygon shape versus by city or county boundaries created some confusion as to who was or was not included in the warning. The text of the tornado warning that was issued at 7.13 a.m. on May 5th and included portions of the city of Richmond is seen on the left side of this slide. The map of the polygon, which we saw in an earlier slide, is provided at the right. When we zoom in on the city of Richmond, we can see that only southern portions of the city were in the warning polygon. Downtown Richmond, which includes state and local government offices and the Virginia Commonwealth University campuses, is not in the warning polygon. Now let's take a look at the top and bottom portions of the warning which are used to trigger various warning systems that determine for which areas the system will alert. At the top of the warning are two pieces of geographic information. The first is the list of localities included in the warning. The city of Richmond is in that list without the geographic delimiter included for Chesterfield, Amelia, Henrico, and Dinwiddie counties. The second, which I have highlighted in green, is used by NOAA Weather Radio and in turn by EAS to determine which localities are included in the warning. The three-digit numbers after VAC are nationally designated FIPS codes for cities and counties included in short fuse warnings. For this warning, they are Amelia, Chesterfield, Dinwiddie, and Henrico counties, as well as the city of Richmond in that order. 
The six digits after the FIPS code list denote the expiration date and time of the warning in universal time constant, or GMT. In this case, 1145 stands for 1145 UTC slash GMT, which is 745 Eastern Daylight Time. At the bottom of the warning, to the right of the lat dot 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 lon, are the latitude and longitude pairs corresponding to the vertices of the warning polygon. The latitude longitude pairs allow the warning to be plotted by TV stations and on internet radar plots, as well as internet radar loops. The information at the top and bottom of our severe thunderstorm, tornado, and flash flood warnings is the only information necessary to activate the various warning systems that we've discussed. Unfortunately, because of the differences in various warning systems, there can be confusion as to whether someone receiving a warning notification is or is not included in the actual warning polygon. Such was the case on May 5th. Noel Weather Radio and EAS alerted for the entire city of Richmond, as well as the other localities included in that warning. However, other methods, such as mobile apps and INWS, alerted based upon the warning polygon. And if you remember, our warning text simply said, City of Richmond. Virginia Commonwealth University triggered their siren system based upon the City of Richmond verbiage in the warning text. This resulted in some tornado action plans being activated when, technically, they did not need to activate. As a result of the actions being taken by some entities in the city of Richmond who were outside of the warning polygon, our National Weather Service office in Wakefield received questions and concerns about whether downtown Richmond was or was not included in this warning. Although these warning system inconsistencies have existed for a decade, they were amplified during this event. To review, short-fused National Weather Service warnings are storm or polygon based. Some warning technologies utilize the polygon boundaries to determine who will or will not receive the warning, while other methods, such as NOAA Weather Radio and the Emergency Alert System, warn on a city or county boundary basis. Unfortunately, there's no simple solution to this dilemma. For any tornado, severe thunderstorm, or flash flood warning you receive, it's always best to check local TV, internet radar data, or your mobile app to determine whether the warning polygon includes your location. Thank you for your time, and I hope you have a better understanding of National Weather Service short-fused warnings and how they're disseminated to the public.